I want to talk about, you know, we could actually, let's just talk about that first because why why wouldn't I? Because it's here and, um, Oh, it's frustrating. I mean, we've seen the writing on the wall for a long time though. And the devs have been saying this kind of stuff for a while. So there's some people who kept trying to defend what they're doing, trying to defend the reboot games. Oh, but she's going to become the Tomb Raider. It's fine. This is just an origin story. That has been the excuse they've been running with since 2013. And, you know, originally in 2013, I was like, okay, let's see what happens. Let's, let's, let's experience this origin story. Uh, But then, especially by the time Shadow of the Tomb Raider came out and the devs started saying, oh, by the way, she's going to become a Tomb Raider, which is a protector of artifacts. Mm. That's when it hit me like, wait a minute, this (laughs) isn't a transformation, it's a transition because being a Tomb Raider is being a grave robber it's not being a protector of artifacts so yeah i can't Im- it's like such a fundamental change mm-hmm. to what laura croft is and uh, has been for 30 years yep. um and, and the fact that they could be so weird about like oh yeah i mean she's just a protector like uh let me bring up this uh bit of information because i thought it was so you shared with me Mm-hmm. A little quote, and just sort of the people at home can see. Uh, Melanie Mack, who, by the way, uh, is, is uh, joined with me on the screen right now, uh, tweeted this out. Raiding and colonialism. Now, they just put this <laughs> out, right? Not the, yeah, from- they just did. Now, this is um, this is in reference to the new tabletop game that uh, Evil Hat Productions or whatever they're called. They make a bunch of queer stuff. Um they are working with Crystal Dynamics on this. So it's like a partnership thing. Evil Hat, if I remember correctly, was also the company that was okay making money off HP Lovecraft's um, legacy, uh-huh. but then virtue signaling about how he was a terrible man wow. and that he was the worst thing. Now, look, the one of the wildest things with like social justice warriors and people like that, that t- to me is like, we make they make no room for you know times changing. HP Lovecraft is over 100 years old. Yeah. Okay? So the fact that he used you know the N word, um, right? You know, in 1902 or whatever it was. Yeah. Like, uh, oh, like okay. I'm I'm not saying it's okay. I'm just saying like let's it not was- clutch our pearls over it. It's a lot different than people saying it now. It it just is. So. Right. Yeah. It's now obviously it, it's different. Um, he named his cat uh, the hard R. He had a black cat famously named uh, the N word. That's kind of um, great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, I think he I clearly think, loves his cat, you know, so it's yeah. like it couldn't have been with malicious intent to name him that. I mean, he loved his cat. <laughs> yeah. I would think so. And then I, from what I remember correctly, a lot of his. Like he denounced a lot of his, you know, like old views later in his life. And and like people always forget that. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, so I'm not surprised hearing this from them. If I'm if I'm correct about that, I think that's who it was. And they put so, so colonialism is a trigger word for SJWs. And so is um, mm-hmm. what do they call it when you are like in uh, is it colonialism only? Where they're like, uh, oh, you came to this land and you, oh yeah, colonized it. Colonizer, yeah. Yeah. yes. Yeah, you mean conquered it. <laughs> like all land has been conquered since the beginning of time. But they put, um, raiding is depicted in the original Tomb Raider games and stories. Involves going into ancient tombs and historical sites of different civilizations and acquiring, acquiring artifacts. It operates on the assumption of finders, keepers. <laughs> it grants raiders with the means and drive to claim ownership of artifacts, regardless of where they have any historical or claim to the river. That's kind of the whole point. Mm-hmm. That's kind of the reason you did it for the treasure. It was. You that's why they're to put it in a museum. Yes. Lara Croft was a grave robber. She, so her original biography and the way that she was created, she sought out these artifacts for the sport of it. She wanted it. Um, even in like Tomb Raider Cradle of Life, the movie with Angelina Jolie, they there was like this this artifact and this guy, he asked her, he says, what's that? And she's like, it's mine. That's how yeah. she felt about these things. Like mine, I want them. I, it wasn't about money. It wasn't about um, anything else, but she got a thrill out of it. She wanted these artifacts. Right. And, then, and, and right. So it was who she was. 
-hmm. It was every, it's built into every, the fabric of who Lara Croft is. So they go, Lara no longer decorates her mantle with mythic artifacts. As a raider, she prioritizes seeking out the truth. Much of this game is inspired by her humanity. Yeah, I know how, I know every month when I have to pay my mortgage, I just pay it with humanity. <laughs> yeah. That's, what, yeah that, that's why Lara Croft does these things. She can't, you know, she just does them out of, because she is so kind. And I say, in this game, we seek to work alongside Crystal Dynamics, which, by the way, brought to you great trash heaps like, uh, did they do the Marvel, that disastrous Marvel game? They did. They did. They did that one. The Avengers one that just flopped yeah. colossally. They needed that humbling because, oh my goodness, Crystal Dynamics has just been awful to Tomb Raider fans, classic fans that have been wanting stuff. They've been disregarding us. They've been disrespecting the franchise and Lara Croft, and they were kind of on their high horse for a bit there because the first Tomb Raider reboot game um, did well. sold yeah. well. And yeah. so, but then after they got that humble pie with the Avengers, yeah, that's changed a lot. <laughs> yeah, and because there's, because there's as someone, you know, points out, uh, because there's already a chick in Tomb Raider, they just had to make it lame and gay. So it was only, they only had to do right. two of the three steps. So, you know, as a, as a life, I mean, you, I, I think perhaps, you might like Lara Croft um, based on <laughs> what's behind you there. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't, I mean, obviously this is getting destroyed. The, the tweet that announces this article mm -hmm. currently has 666 comments, coincidentally, and, <laughs> and 70 likes. And right. most of the people in the comments are like, what are you thinking? What, what is going on here? Yeah, that this is not going over well with Tomb Raider fans. I mean, people have been delusional for a while. And again, like those of us classic fans have been trying to tell people this, all this rebooted stuff, they're, they're, this is to hijack and to transition Tomb Raider into something else. And it changed Lara Croft into someone else. They are not trying to make her the original Tomb Raider again. And we kept being told, gaslit, oh no, that's not true. That's not true. And what we've seen with alleged leaks in the past where, Oh, suppose allegedly Lara Croft's going to have a girlfriend in the next game and uh, yeah. she's going to retire from Tomb Raiding and they're going to have this India girl be the next Tomb Raider and all kinds of just, it, it, oh yeah, and she's got to be protecting artifacts now and that validated everything we've been saying. When you see uh, even a power wash simulator, there was a Tomb Raider crossover with that. And you <laughs> power see like, wash simulator. yeah, so you see Lara Croft's emails and stuff. And it's like, okay, now she's auctioning off all of her, all of her stuff that artifacts and stuff she had to charity and to try to, to raise money to bring these artifacts back to their respectful owners and this, that, and the other. And it was like, oh my gosh, they're setting everything up for this new direction that they're trying to take Lara Croft. And even in this colonialism quote thing they had here, they were saying like, oh, okay, they, they've addressed, Lara Croft has already acknowledged her past mistakes. And now she's trying to understand and show respect to these other cultures. And it's just awful. And not only that, but so the characters like on this tabletop RPG game, they have pronouns. Obviously. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's like Curtis Trent, he, him, Natla, she, her. It's, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's like when, um, I forget, I think it was like, um, when those leaks for the end of the last star Wars movie came out uh -huh. and, and, and they were like, no, that's not what happens. That's not what happens. That's not what they don't do. And it was exactly what everyone it's like, they try to hold off as much as they can on people so that, you know, they hopefully will still buy a ticket or buy mm -hmm. the, buy the merch, but it's just, people have now started to wise up to that and they've decided, yeah. Hey, maybe I'm not going to, um, you know, pre-order this, which by the way, everyone should not be pre-ordering anything. I don't care how much <laughs> you love it because you got to wait. There's no, there's once you pre-order, they have your money and, and like you're stuck on it. So yeah. Rip a to, uh, Tomb Raider OG. Yeah. Tony... And, and like they're working right now on a um, uh, Crystal Dynamics is because some people are there a little confused because we just had the remasters. Now that was all Embracer outsourcing it to Aspire and Saber Games and they put that together. Crystal Dynamics has never wanted to do remasters and that's why they had to insert this lame disclaimer 
at the beginning saying like, oh, we don't condone any of this. This is problematic and you need to see it to see how problematic it was. So they tried to, you know, crap on it. Um, but they didn't ever want that to happen. That was all thanks to Embracer that we even got those remasters. Um, but yeah, so Crystal Dynamics are working on another mainline game that's been in development for ever and um with amazon so yeah uh that'll probably be a thing and i expect it to flop as well as the uh, since they're working with phoebe waller bridge on like a movie with amazon oh, as well Phoebe waller bridge oh with such hits as indiana jones <laughs> and the dial of destiny who doesn't want to tune yeah. into that uh, so <laughs> what we're going to see is a lot of, and, and that's the thing is the remasters for Tomb Raider, the old school stuff just got a ton of good reception. Uh, the sales were great. Uh, so I think, unfortunately, a lot of people who are expecting more than more of that type of uh, energy are going to be disappointed whenever they see all this woke crap in the pipeline with the Netflix uh, animation as well. It's going to be bad. <laughs> yeah, it's that's, I mean, basically I think if you adopt the, everything I loved will be destroyed. If you adopt that mentality, I think yeah. you'll be, it's just, you know, Lord help all the fallout fans because oh, I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm telling you right now that I hope I'm wrong, but we already see the main character as portrayed by fallout as a strong, independent women who don't need no man. Uh, you know, I, we're going to see, we're going to see just how that turns out. Yeah.